Y esta nota que vamos a presentar tiene mucho que ver con una duda. ¿Cómo recibirá usted esto de que un señor perfora una tela o corta otra? Y es famoso en el mundo. Y es argentino. Y es respetado. Y es muy querido. Y siempre es un símbolo. Vamos a la nota. Me gustaría recibir sus comentarios. Nacido de padres italianos en Rosario de Santa Fe, Argentina, y muy referida en las biografías de los artistas, ¿por qué? Porque Lucio Fontana divide en sus primeros años entre Argentina e Italia sus estudios. Academia de Brera con Adolfo Weld y exponiendo sus obras en la galería milanesa Il Milione. Regresa a la Argentina en el 40 y aparte de escapar de una Europa devastada por la guerra, fue allí donde él empezó a desarrollar otras técnicas. Fontana fundó la Academia Altamira y junto con varios de sus alumnos escribe el Manifiesto Blanco, en donde se afirma que la materia, el color, el sonido en movimiento son los fenómenos cuyo desarrollo simultáneo constituye un nuevo arte y así se plantan. Y esto se convertiría en el espacialismo, nada menos que espacialista en castellano. Lo buscamos, lo mostramos y confrontamos. Fontana's works are, at the same time, a meditation and a performance, which leaves a very, very distinctive trace. He eluded all the categories because, in his own words, he didn't want to be a painter, he didn't want to be a sculptor. What he wanted to be was to be a spatial artist. He was interested in light, in space, and the way these two elements could create interesting and contemporary works. He spent the years of the war in Argentina. He got back to Milan and his studio had been bombed. Everything inside the studio had been destroyed. That wasn't traumatic for him. He thought that that could be the new beginning, not only of his career, but the new beginning of mankind. And in 49, everything changed. He had his great epiphany and he punctured the canvas. Destroying the two-dimensional wall and creating this galaxy of opportunities beyond. The next decade was extremely important for Fontana. He developed the idea of spatial art through perforations in many different ways. One of these was adding Murano glass stones, putting together not only the spatial perforation, but also the influence of light and reflections onto his canvas. He then got to the end of the 50s with a new breakthrough idea, maybe his most iconic one, the slash. He started with several ones, and then he summarized it to one, one single slash, and he called attesa, waiting, expectation. A passage, a door towards infinity. The Finidio is a series of 38 works, and it's the culmination of his entire practice. These canvases, which are enormous, 178 centimeters, his height, they are egg-shaped. They represent the rebirth of, of the humankind after the war, the rebirth of the modern man, which looks out to the stars. The surface is so rich. There are so many layers. Every time you see it from a slightly different angle, you see new things. It's a work that you can look at for days without really managing to understand. You can trace the influence of Fontana all the way to the American minimalists because he opened a path. He was the first one who managed to, to create something, an, an artwork that was neither a pure painting nor a pure sculpture. It was an art object. Man wasn't on the moon yet. He brings man to the moon with his work. He foreshadowed that the man would be out there walking, creating paths on the surface. It really is visionary. Mm -hmm. 